What's this? A two for one special? That's right. I'm back again. And this time we're going to be going over all of, of course, the information that has come out alongside the DLC announcement for Tarmacon uh, Thrones of Decay. Though I, I guess it's just Thrones of Decay. It's tempting to always insert Tarmacon's name into it because he had the book name. So for this particular video, uh, we're basically just going to be going over all of the Steam pages. Um, which I believe are going to be uh, talking about like some of the units and the regiments of renown and stuff. Uh, I do want to double check to see if they released another one because I've got the Steam pages. So let me make sure that we have all of the information for this. So I bet if I go to the actual trailer itself, um, which is so good, so good. Um, okay, they just have they just have those links. All right. Um, so this is pretty exciting. Um, obviously, I will link down to the uh, the uh, news for all that if you haven't seen it. I think we're also going to use this video. You know what? I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. So yeah. Okay. So we're just gonna be looking at the Steam pages today, um, which I think have a fair amount of the information. I don't know if they have everything yet. I think they just have some stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into it. And we're going to start over here with uh, Malachi. So we, of course, have with Thrones of Decay, Malachi, um, Makasin, the Slayer Engineer, uh, which uh, I do need to respond to a no <laughs> number of comments that were made on the video. Of I actually got some pretty hearty laughs out of people pointing out various things that I had said disparaging Malachi in the past, all of which uh, past me still stands by, but modern me disagrees with because I did some further research. And that is the way that lore and all of that should be, is that the more you look into it, the more your understanding uh, grows and you come to uh, appreciate things more. So anyway, so we don't have a lot of screenshots to work with yet, um, but that's fine. You know, we just got the cool one here. But I'm sure they'll add more stuff as time passes. But we have here, it says, uh, The Malachi Throne of Decay pack introduces Malachi Mackison, a new legendary lore for the dwarves usable in both realms of chaos and immortal empires. Embrace conflict and ingenuity with a new suite of lords, heroes, units, and mechanics to enhance your campaign roster on and off the battlefield. Malachi Mackison brings unique campaign mechanics to the dwarves with a brand new objective in the realm of chaos, independent from the Earth's and storyline, plus new units and heroes to help them achieve glorious victory. So your campaign revolves around seek a glorious death, reap the rewards, and test your latest innovations as Malachi Mackison. So that's fun. So going to be working on the, how he balances life as an engineer and a slayer. Very similar to how if you're playing an Ungrim campaign, you are balancing the difficulties of being a king in a slayer. Though Malachi actually has a slightly easier, well, no, a notably easier proposition because Malachi can actually you know, go out on the journey of seeking a glorious doom, whereas the Oath of Kingship that Ungram has prevents him from doing that. Uh, so, good for him. Bolster your units from the skies with the Spirit of Grugni, a mobile workshop and transport vessel. Interesting. Okay, so... Okay, so that, to me, sounds like the Spirit of Grugni is a campaign mechanic, not... Sim it, that's not a mount. That is a campaign mechanic. Um... Transport vessel and mobile workshop. So I would assume that that could mean a couple different things. Uh, it could be that um, it's going to allow you to maybe do some kind of weird finagly crap on the campaign map. Uh, could be a horde type thing. Could be like kind of like with the Vampire Coast. Could be uh, just that it's able to give you maybe it gives you like army abilities uh could be what it is is maybe you're able to get like uh, maybe it'll be like your tech tree uh so you're able to get various tech upgrades um that will buff the uh spirit of grugni so that maybe it can like bring things to the battlefield or what have you uh but that sounds fun i'm excited to see what that is and then of course garagrim iron fist the war mourner of karakadrin and son of ungrim joins malachi's legendary hero super duper exciting um it's funny garagrim this is actually probably one of the very few times where we've gotten a legendary hero that I'm more excited to have him in a different campaign than the campaign he's initially packaged with. Uh, I am very excited to play an Ungrim campaign with his son instead of uh, 
uh, <laughs> focusing on Malachi. But I, in Malachi, he'll be perfect as well. And then improve your odds with five new units, a new generic lord, a new generic hero, and a further three regiments of renown. And then down here we have, having been ejected from the Engineers Guild after a series of ca catastrophic malfunctions that cost the lives of many a dwarf, Malachi Mackison took the Slayer's Oath and continues to engineer Grand Machines to this day, assisted by his entourage of Slayers. One day he hopes to overcome this shame by seeking a glorious death in battle, so at last he may be seen as a true inventor of incredible works and a legend of his time. With a fascination for creating Grand Machines, Malachi is a ranged support character, damaging from afar with his guns, bombs, artillery, and most deranged of munitions to whittle down his opponents. Malachi craves nigh unwinnable battles and fights with mighty foes. As a slayer, he seeks out those worthy combatants to atone for his sins, but as an engineer, he sees it as an opportunity to learn new tricks, advance his equipment, and crush all that stand before him in the name of progress. With Malachi's adventures, uh, so those are capitalized, meaning that's a mechanic, Mackison aims to prove himself in combat or die trying. Uh, awesome. I love the sound of it. I love the sound of it. Uh, pretty exciting. Pretty hot. Uh, I think Malachi is going to work really, really well for this. Um, there is still, there's still definitely a big part of me that wants uh, Grim Burlickson one day, but I, I feel like Grim Burlickson would now function much better as a free LC legendary lord to just maybe show up at some point. Or, or if CA takes some of my uh, advice, it'd be really, really great to see just character packs introduced to the game. You know, much smaller DLCs that literally just introduce a set of legendary lords and heroes into the game, and the, that's all it comes with, but they're much smaller in scale. Um, that would be super duper nice, because, uh, like, you, of course, you could be like, oh, well, we could add in some new things uh, with Grimm, but uh, I really just, I, I think that it sounds like he's going to be fine just kind of coming in on his own. And then maybe you kind of finish up with dwarfs with a Bugman DLC that actually comes with a bunch of stuff. Well, let's, let's say Tarmacon for last. All right, Elspeth. Elspeth von Draken. So I mentioned this is going to be much the same. Yep. So about this content. The Elspeth Thrones of Decay pack introduces Elspeth von Draken, a new legendary lord for the Empire, usable in both campaigns. Embrace sorcery and wisdom with new lords, heroes, units, and mechanics to enhance your campaign roster on and off the battlefield. Elspeth Von Dragon arrives in Total War Warhammer 3, bringing unique campaign mechanics to the Empire with a brand new objective and... Yeah, yeah okay, same stuff. Uh, embrace the strengths of magic and gunpowder with Nuln's Imperial Gunnery School. Then you may purchase exclusive and powerful units by unlocking the Amethyst Armory and travel instantly between friendly settlements with guards... Oh, fast travel in the Empire. Oh, okay. That's... Okay, so that's... That's very cool. Uh, so one of the things that's talked about in Elspeth von Draken, about Elspeth von Draken, which I'll do some videos talking about them kind of exclusively, just kind of like overviews to the characters, is that uh, Elspeth von Draken is definitely very well known for kind of being an Empire character who's very standoffish and mysterious, but her kind of gimmick is that she is able to get around and go where she needs to be, uh, you know, at the right time. Uh, so she's, she's less about just, uh, uh, just, you know, magic. She's less about walking across the world with armies and is more about showing where she needs to be at the right time. And, uh, oh, someone has posted all of the unit art already. How did they get this already done? Huh? So we will take a look at this in a moment. So, okay, we'll wrap up with that. Um, good Lord, look at all of this stuff. Okay, cool. <laughs> all right, anywho, so we've got, uh, so she has the known Imperial Gunnery School. So that's obviously gonna be a big focus on engineering. It sounds like she's gonna be starting a Nuln, uh, which is very, very nice. Uh, so we're going to have her with all of the new shiny gimmicks, uh, with, uh, potentially, I assume upgrading all of your block powder units and your war machines and all those things. Amethyst armory, uh, sounds magic related, which is pretty cool. Pretty hype. Uh, then the fast travel, fast travel sounds very, very exciting. Uh, the empire is a fairly big place. And if they're really wanting to run with the idea of allowing the empire to, um, allowing the Empire to focus on defending the entirety of the Empire, 
making sure like part of it isn't just getting obliterated early in the campaign, uh, you know, because of vampire counts or the inevitability of Festus or Zazel or all of these other like really frustrating characters that kind of come in and start punching people in the face. Um, this will do very, very nicely for allowing you to, um, um, deal with those types of things. So in any event, uh, we then have the, you know, the, the Theodore Bruckner, obviously, of uh, the Hound of Judgment, skilled fighter. He is the judicial champion of the Elector Countess of Nome, Emmanuel von Liebwitz, uh, who's a super big badass in his own right. And with Elspeth, we get Elspeth von Draken, the Dark Lady of Nome, is a respected advisor to the Elector Counts and instrumental at keeping the plagues of Nurgle at bay. As a magisterix of the Amethyst Order, the Graveyard Rose may be all that stands in the Maggot Lord's way. As a powerful spellcaster, Elspeth von Draken soars across the skies on her Carmine Dragon with a strong helping of magical mastery under her belt. Elspeth von Draken is committed to protecting the Empire by any means necessary, and her alliance with Nome has allowed her to support the forces of the Empire in a unique way. The true potential of the Empire's gunpowder units can be unleashed with Nolan's Imperial Gunnery School, furthering the weaponry of the Empire. To do this, magic and black powder can no longer be separate entities. That just sounds like war crimes. And instead must work together to ensure the forces of chaos are kept at bay. Elspeth patronage will go a long way in helping to develop the next stage of technological advancement, as she also offers her unique talents to combine her mastery of death magic into the munitions of Imperial Gunnery School, creating a combined arms force of amethyst units of the foes of the empire will regret cr crossing oh my lord <laughs> that just has war crimes written all over it because black powder and explosives weren't horrible enough they're combining death magic with it that is super interesting okay so it definitely feels that which you know with known kind of being her main focus and if you look at elspeth's kind of main roster back in the tarmacon campaign She's much more, you know, it, it's much more about a focus on Nuln as opposed to when you look at Elspeth, you might think, oh, it's going to be really magically focused. But no, it's really engineering focused because it's more about the city of Nuln that she is a patron of, uh, or that is patroning her rather, um, as opposed to like the colleges of magic. Because Elspeth really isn't associated with the colleges at all. She actually, although she graduated from the colleges, she really refuses to work with them and stands independent of them, which is actually causing quite a bit of friction between her and the Colleges of Magic in the original story, to the point that there are rumors swirling around the Empire of many people anticipating Elspeth von Draken and Balthazar Gelt coming to a head, uh, where Balthazar Gelt is going to have to rein her in um, and go after her because she's just not doing what the Colleges want her to do. Of course, Gelt wants to avoid that at all costs because Elspeth is incredibly powerful. And there's also, you know, the implication that Gelt is keenly aware of the fact that she's doing a good job, even if she's not doing what the colleges necessarily want her to do. Uh, and then we have Big Daddy himself, Tarmacon. So with Tarmacon, uh, we get the following things. Obviously, he's in both things. Embrace Decay and Tyranny with new units. Uh, you get new campaign mechanics. So what do you do with Tarmacon? Gather chieftains from powerful factions across the known world and become the ultimate warlord of Nurgle as Tarmacon. Be one of the uh, one of the first to flock to Tarmacon's banner is the new legendary hero for Nurgle, Kazik the Befouled, who joins the Maggot Lord's side. Awesome, excellent. The Chaos Lord of Nurgle and Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle reinforce the Grandfather's Throng as a new lord and hero choices respectively. I will say, I find it a little funny that with the other two, they were like, Look at all these new mechanics, and with Tarmacon, they're like, he's got so he's got one big fucking mechanic, it seems, and then they just tell us who the Lord and Hero are. I would have liked to know who the Lord and Hero are for the others, uh, but it's fine, we'll get there. And then Tarmacon the Maggot Lord. Tarmacon, the Maggot Lord and Champion of Nurgle, is one of the greatest chaos warlords to ever afflict the known world. A mighty leader to some and a bloated cor corpse worm to others, those that stand against Tarmacon quickly fall under the banner of this bringer of desolation. As a hard-hitting tank with the strength of an ogre and the vigor of Nurgle's greatest combatants, Tarmacon rides into battle atop his unique toad dragon, Bubelos. Um, actually, it's uh, it's actually Bubelos, uh, to unleash rot on any who dare oppose the warlord. Tarmacon's crusade across the land is not merely one of destruction or decay, for he amasses a horde of heroic characters as he goes, absorbing the many strengths of those that could not defeat him. 
These heroic characters, also known as chieftains, are added to his ever-growing empire once Tarmacon has displayed his true dominating power, granting the Maggot Lord a suite of champions and warriors for use in his Grand Crusade. With enough devoted chieftains under his wing, Tarmacon can pursue ultimate victory for the throne of chaos itself. So, okay, so that probably explains why Tarmacon had some weird units in the trailer. Presumably, the chieftains are going to be giving him access to units normally not a part of his roster. Because we saw, like, the Chaos War Mammoths, for instance. Um, so that's excellent. So, with that out of the way, uh, I actually just popped over to the Reddit because I've been getting a couple of, like, little announcements and stuff. So, if we actually pop over to the subreddit, uh, we can see that some people have apparently already been digging up um, some new unit types. Uh, so here we have the new empire units uh, displayed on the Reddit, which is absolutely bonkers. So here we have uh, we have the Mary Brick Landship. Obviously, the Landship is kind of a fan favorite. It is one of the dumbest, most ridiculous inventions I have ever seen or heard of for Warhammer Fantasy. It is like goofier than I think even the 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 hilarious rap you know the the skaven uh doom wheel but it's there so uh but it's phenomenal um in tabletop it had some pretty impressive rules it's very different from a um it's very different from the uh the steam tank like they're they're similar but it's kind of more like the war wagon fused with a it, th the best way i can describe it is a war wagon fused with a steam tank where you have a platform with a bunch of people that are shooting uh, guns everywhere, front-mounted cannon. Uh, so it's able to kind of have more large coverage. And it performs similar but different roles to the Steam Tank. Um, then it looks like we have a new Steam Tank variant. Uh, what's interesting is you can see the engineer uh, popping out uh, the top of the vehicle. Um, which I'm curious if they've changed the old Steam Tank to have this as well. It was an alternate version you could build the model where you could have like the little driver pop out of the hood of the vehicle and kind of doing the classic like drive me closer so I can hit them with my sword bullshit. But um, they have you can see he has a pistol in his hand because they uh, you could uh, have steam tanks and you you could build it with a little guy at the top. And sometimes they could like depending on what edition you were playing, they'd have a rule where they could just take a crap shot um, a pistol shot out. Then we got uh, these must be the known iron sides because um, we saw them in the trailer. Yep, so you got the known iron sights here, which are heavily armored gunmen with fancier guns. And then uh, these are Hawkland colors. So I'm assuming these are Hawkland long rifles. Uh, that would probably be fair. So Hawkland long rifles, which are sniper infantry, uh, which is awesome. Um, you know, snipers for the Empire. Great. I'm, I'm very curious how they're going to make them work versus compared to like most of the sniper units we have in game are like Gisales and the Crane Gunners, which are two, or, or, or weapon teams, as opposed to infantry. So you have two people, one of them holding uh, a Pavis, and then the other guy's got like a giant gun, right? Whereas the Hawkland Wrong Rifles don't do that. They've got big sniper guns, but they're not those giant um, two-man guns. So I'm curious how they're going to make them work differently from the other traditional sniper units in the game, who have, of course, the incredibly long range, uh, but they're also able to rely on the fact that they've got the Pavis shields, but they're also bulkier and not able to maneuver as well because they've got more people. And then we have a, knight, a new Knightly Order unit, which, let's see, Sword, Death Mask. Okay, so it's a Morite Order. Um, if I go through my Heraldries of the Empire book, let's see if we can find who this is. Reichsgar, because traditionally... Creative Assembly has pulled a lot of their regiments of renown and some units from this book. So we got Knights Panther, Knights of the White Wolf, Knights of the Blazing Sun, Knights of the Everlasting Light, Knights of Sigmar's Blood, Knights Griffin, Knights of the Broken Sword. Aha! We have... Is that them? That, uh, that looks like them. So we have the Knights of the Black Rose. So if you look here, you got... Oh, there we go. Knights of the Black Rose. Oh, wait, hold on, let me change to this screen aha there uh, i don't know if you could tell if my camera is going to focus on it but the knight of the black rose in that image there you go he has that same skull helmet and he's got the same colors so we've got red black and white and we've also got the skull mask 
with the little like laurels on it, which looks pretty similar to this guy over here on the right. Uh, it could be it could be Raven Guard, and it could also be the Knights of Moor. Um, I don't think it's the Raven Guard because if memory serves, the Raven Guard are the ones that are really well known for having ranged weapons. Or is that the Knights of Moor? I always get them mixed up. But one of those two is really well known for carrying ranged weapons, like they carry crossbows, because they're keenly aware of the fact that when you're fighting against the undead, that uh, it's just practical to have ranged weapons because the Necromancer is usually hiding in the back, um, which I loved about them and was why I was really hoping we would get them if we were going to get a Morite order, because like heavy knights with ranged weapons sounds awesome. But they are specialized against undead, um, whereas the... What are the Knights of the Black Rose? Knights of the Black Rose. Their motto is Fear Not Death. And their little lore blurb says, Shrouded in mystery, this order was founded during the dark days of the Black Plague, but has waxed and waned in size over many years. The Knights of the Black Rose frequently use symbols associated with more the God of Death. Okay, so they were literally made to deal with the Black Plague. So they're, you know, they're essentially an anti-plague order. So if you're going up against Nurgle, yeah, these seem like the good guys to call. Uh, and then, oh, the steam tank obviously is a variant. It has the it has a multi fire gun on the front. This is excellent. Um, uh, Cubicle Seven actually, which is the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay Fourth Edition guys, which some of the role play, a lot of the roleplay stuff has been making its way into Total War. Um, one of the things that they came up with for the uh, Total War or for the roleplay was they released a book called Oh God, I can't remember what it's called at the top of my head. One second, hold on. Um, it's, oh god, I can't remember what it's called, but they, they released a book about steam tanks. Um, it's not a full book, it's more like a, it's a PDF. Uh, but they released a PDF that is just about steam tanks. I can't remember what it's called off the life of me. But uh, it introduced steam tank variants because it basically explained how each of the remaining steam tanks has a unique gimmick. So there are some steam tanks that have like a fighting platform on top, which allow for more guys. There is a steam tank with a Hellblaster volley gun attachment, so it's able to rapid fire off the front. There's the one with the main cannon, and there's a mortar variant. So it looks like Creative Assembly took the Hellblaster Volley Gun variant, and that it, they made that a unit. So now we're going to have the regular steam tank that has the big front-mounted cannon, and then you have the Hellblaster Volley Gun variant, which is going to be a rapid-fire variant. That probably won't have anti-large, but it'll be more specialized against like elite cavalry and elite infantry, which is super-duper sexy. Then we have Slayers. Which, for the dwarfs, we've got the Doom Seekers. Look at the Doom Seekers! Look, they got the chains! They got the whirling chain axes! Okay, so they do have chain axes. Yay! You couldn't really tell in the trailer. But uh, you can see how he's holding the chains to whirl them around. It, I like their design much more than the original tabletop ones. Because the original tabletop ones, like, the axes didn't look very practical to hold. Because um, they were kind of more just like axe blades directly attached to chain, which looked like a bitch. Um, these ones are like full axes that then have chains along the bottom, so they have hilts you can grab, but they also have the chains. So the Doomseeker looks fantastic. Uh, then we got the Goblin Hewer with the Slayer Crew, the Thunder Barge, Slayer Pirate! <laughs> you got the Slayer Pirate, that's amazing! Uh, because he's got the, uh, so yeah, we got Slayer Pirates, yes, we got the Slayer Pirate, so you got Slayers with swords and guns. So this is going to be the first official Total War Dwarf unit that has swords, which is very exciting. So they're going to be, they're going to basically be like your uh, free company militia, where they're going to be, uh, or like your, um, the, the Dark Elf uh, guys with the swords and hand, hand crossbows. So they're going to be your mixed unit that can shoot people in the back as they're chasing them down. Love it, love it, love it. And then... A Thunder... Oh, Grudge Rakers. Yep, so the Thunderer with Grudge Raker. So you can see that's a double barrel rifle. So the, the, the Grudge Raker, which the Grudge Raker as a concept was introduced through Grim Burlickson, who we actually talked about earlier in this video, and I also... I may have talked about him last video, but uh, I did talk about him a lot in my predictions. Grim Burlickson's big invention that he introduced to the Karazhan Corps was uh, the, um, the Grudge Raker, which the Grudge Raker is a fairly nasty double barreled rifle that just it just hits like a bitch however what's interesting is that vermintide uh, uh vermintide 2 which is you know all about the end times and everything took the grudge raker and expanded it as a concept 
So instead of making it where it was kind of like a magic item for Grim Burlickson, they made it where the, he simply kind of invented the Grudge Raker, and then the design took off um, among the dwarfs, and many different dwarfs created their own versions of the Grudge Rakers, and it even became kind of a standardized variant. But uh, Vermintide made it into a shotgun, where in the original tabletop game, it's just a double-barreled rifle, so it had a multi-shot of two, but it still had like long-range armor piercing like you would expect from a rifle. But Vermintide came around and essentially said that, okay, that's his variant, but the the rest of the dwarfs basically augmented it to be a shotgun. Um, so I'm assuming they're going to use the Vermintide variant. Because obviously, if it's allowed in Vermintide, that means Games Workshop gave it the big thumbs up in the okay. And we also see that Vermintide was also where the Iron Drakes were remade into flamethrowers. Because if you go play the tabletop game, the iron uh, the iron drakes were they they fired like plasma bolts essentially so they were single shot weapons that fired very quickly um, like they had the quick to fire rule and they would shoot these like big globs of plasma um, but it was a single shot weapon they weren't flamethrowers but Vermintide reimagined them into flamethrowers and so and Total War ended up going with the flamethrower variant so I'm assuming that's gonna be the exact same case here. So we've got your anti-infantry Doomseeker Slayers, your Goblin Hewer, which is going to be heavy armor piercing, just obliterating units, but probably very short range. Thunder Barge being probably the highest tier dwarf unit in the game with like cannons and bombs and lots of guys with guns on the top. Your Slayer Pirates, which are probably going to be a very low tier unit um, that have swords and pistols, but are going to be good at not only are they unbreakable slayers, but they're going to be shooting people trying to run away from them. So they're going to be really good at dealing with like light infantry, skirmishers, and light cavalry. Units that traditionally avoid slayers and are just like dragging, you know, where they're like, oh, slayers are chasing me. I'll just stay ahead of them and keep shooting them and just run away from them. Slayer pirates are going to go, uh-uh, nope. If you try and run away from us, we're going to shoot you in the back. And then thunderers with uh, grudge breakers, which are, of course, uh, your shotgun infantry. So I assume they will be very, very similar to the uh, the Cathayan shotguns um, or the blunderbusses for the Chaos Dwarfs. They'll probably be similar types. Uh, I think, I imagine they'll be more on like the Cathayan blunderbuss side, less on the Chaos Dwarf blunderbuss side, but we'll have to wait and see. But that's going to be an amazing unit for dwarfs uh, because traditionally the thing that dwarf shooting struggles with is just mass, right? Just like huge amounts of enemies all over the place. So having shotguns that could just like ba bam and just kill lots of guys at once in a wider area and also like really stagger them um, through through just the sheer number of the shots is going to be amazing. And then last but certainly not least, uh, we have the uh, Nurgle units here, which uh, we've got uh, we've got Plague Ogres, which look absolutely fantastic and awesome. And actually, someone put up this here which shows that there, there's two variants so it looks like you've got one-handed plague ogres and great weapon plague ogres so i'm assuming here we're looking at an anti-infantry and an anti-large variant but that's super duper awesome because that means that we are looking at and this is all just from the reddit by the way um uh, so if you want to see this feel free to check out the the total war subreddit but that means we're going to be looking at plague ogres that probably have just armor piercing or maybe armor piercing anti-large or anti-infantry and then your two-handed variant traditionally will be anti-large. Uh, which means that Nurgle is finally going to get access to anti-large units. Finally. Then, of course, we have the Rot Beast Knights who look fantastic. So they've got, like, the nasty spears. It looks like they've got a mutated spike sword hand um, to match them alongside the Rot Beast. But they look horribly mutated, which I love. Uh, I love that they're very, very ugly. They're not just kind of pristine like you have with the Doom Knights and the Skull Crushers, uh, but they're like horribly entropic and rotten. Then you've got the to the generic Toad Dragon. So we got the basic bitch Toad Dragon who looks marvelous. Pestigors! Oh, the Pestigors look so good! Oh my god, they got the big two-handed cleavers. They're all nasty and diseased. They look reasonably well armored, I'll say. Looks like they uh, got like chainmail and heavy armor. So probably like mid to high tier armor. Um, but this is very exciting. I'm very excited for the Pestigors because I'm a Beastman stan. I can't help it. Um, they look marvelous. I can't wait to see these. 
Uh, it's going to be really interesting to see them compared against like the Zongors because the Zongors are sorted board with barrier. So they're very tanky, right? They're more about melee defense and uh, tankiness and survivability um, because of the, the barrier, which allows them to also be really good at like hit and run tactics because you hit, fight till your barrier wears down, then you pull back, wait for your barrier to recharge, then you go back in. Very Zinchian, right? And they also have Arcane Mirth, which makes it where for the more spells being cast around the battlefield, the higher their damage gets. So Zongors are really kind of your longer lasting guys, where the longer the battle drags out, they're able to get more and more use out of barrier and their weapon damage goes up. So really solid unit. And then we have the Bile Trolls. So we got the Bile Troll here. It looks like you can see exposed muscle on his hand because his skin's rotting off and he's all green. He's got horns coming out of him and he's a big ugly dude. Uh, I'm really excited to see the Bile Trolls in game. Um, Bile Trolls are also something that if you play a lot of Vermintide, you have probably fought a lot of these, which are trolls that have been infected with a really nasty series of Nurgle diseases to the point that they are perpetually rotting and regenerating simultaneously. So they are trolls who are in horrible agony at all times because their bodies are just constantly breaking down and reshaping um, endlessly. Endlessly. Um, but then, um, the last thing that we have on here that I think is worth looking at that people are just, man, people are just posting everything on the Reddit, but Hey, I'll take it. Uh, we have the chieftains of Tarmacon, uh, who look pretty fucking cool. I'm going to say, so the chieftains of Tarmacon, we've got, uh, you got Kazakh the Befouled right in the center. Then you've got, looks like a exalted hero. Cause these are all supposed to be like legendary ish heroes. So you got an Exalted Hero, a Chaos Dwarf in green armor with, like, disease on his face, it looks like. And he's got, like, pockmarks on his face. So you've got a Chaos Dwarf, a Bray Shaman. Oh, Bray Shaman in, like, green and purple. A Famir Bale Fiend and a Skin Wolf Werekin. Ooh! <laughs> I'm really fucking hyped! Uh, this is looking really good. This is looking really, really good. I am so deeply excited for this. Um, all right, so I believe that is all the information we have right now. Um, I don't see anything. I, I don't know where these people are getting this from because I didn't see it on the Steam page. So it's somewhere, but I don't know where. Um, but it is looking like uh, we are going to see... Um, I'm assuming what we're going to be seeing here is for like the lord so they told us chaos lord of nurgle chaos sorcerer of uh, nurgle for tarmacons lords and heroes for the um for the slayers it has to be the demon slayer and the dragon slayer it has to like the whole pack is just slayers um like there's a little bit of some engineering stuff to kind of fill in what the slayers couldn't but it feels so hilariously over the top slayer focused it's, it's got to be the Demon Slayer and the Dragon Slayer. And then for the Empire, they have choices. I will say, it's very interesting to me that the Celestial Hurricanum did not make the cut for the Empire roster. Which to me, indicates that this, there is going to be at least one more DLC for the Empire coming in the future. Which I will say, I've seen a lot of people talking about the whole like, Oh, there's only six more DLC to Warhammer's Dot. Bullshit. Don't ignore that shit. Like, we are still, I, I feel quite confident that we are, plans can change at any point, and even if there was, which I doubt it, but even if there was a meeting where someone from CA said that, um, where like, oh, it looks like we're only going to be doing six more DLC, plans change all the time, guys. Like, I have, I cannot tell you how many things that I have known for a fact because of a firsthand, insanely reliable source said, X is going to happen, and then it didn't. Because plans change. Um, and it wasn't... It, often, it was because they ended up doing something bigger than they initially planned. Not something smaller. Um, can I believe that there was a meeting where... You know what? I'm going to make that a separate video. Let's not worry about that right now. But I don't worry about it, is what I'm saying. I think that's ridiculous. Don't worry about it. Um, but, uh, yeah. This looks absolutely fucking cool. Um, yeah. Uh, I also got... Man, they also released patch notes today. Um, I'll, I'll do patch notes tomorrow. Let's do patch notes tomorrow. But, uh, I think this all looks really, really solid. I'm extremely excited for this. Uh, big shout out for all of the people, uh, who 
uh, like worked on mods to represent a lot of these things, waiting for this to come live. I'm sure I'll hopefully see it will make sure to shout a lot of those. Like the Thunder Barge mod was a really famous one, for instance. But I have to say, I'm incredibly excited for uh, Thrones of Decay. I'm really glad a lot of the information about it, as far as like what's coming in the pack, is being revealed very, very like immediately. Um, I think that's ideal. It's important for people to know what they're going to be pre-ordering and purchasing. Uh, for those of you that are curious, um, I have already reached out to Fanatical about getting a deal for Thrones of Decay. So if you want to support the channel here, um, I will have a link for you soon uh, by the end of this week at the latest. So if you want to help support me personally while also saving some money and pre-ordering whatever parts of Thrones of Decay you want, because you don't have to buy the whole thing. You can only buy the parts you want. Um, I will have more information on that soon. So if you want to wait for that, uh, please do. And I would really appreciate it. But if you don't also, you know, no hard feelings, do whatever you want. Uh, so thank you all so much for watching. I'm going to get this uploaded um, and uh, we will go from there. But I'm so excited. So uh, man, feels nice to be excited about things again. It's nice. It's very nice, especially with all the Games Workshop shit going on right now. But anyway, uh, thank you all for watching. I've said that about eight times. I'm going to get out of here. Okay, bye.